Unafraid Show Week 8 College Football Mail Bag. These are the questions that you guys either sent in to IMAD, I-M-M-A-D, at unafraidshow.com or at George Reister or at Unafraid Show on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Instagram or anywhere else. And of course, we will always answer your questions. You guys make sure that you guys like, subscribe, get notifications and tell a friend about the Unafraid Show because we not playing no games around here, people. First one. Was last weekend's Oregon win over Ohio State the best game that you've ever been to in person as a fan or media member? If not, where does it rank? So I I tried to not be, you know, let recency bias and be a prisoner of the moment. But the answer was that particular game. It was this game this last weekend. It was absolutely fantastic. And the best part about it was, and I talked about this on the recap show, was that Oregon put on a show. It was a performance. It was, you know, uh, like a Bruno Mars, Beyonce, Taylor Swift type concert before. The Oregon Duck did the greatest showman thing. They put uh, people dancing with fire and everything in between. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And then there was the fan participation during the game. Ohio State people will tell you, This was a fantastic college football game, and they wish that the shoe was rocking the exact same way. Uh, Yeah, it it was, but even more so for me, got a chance to see a bunch of my old teammates, guys I watched play for Oregon after and before me. So it was like a reunion too. Josh Pate was there, a lot of other media members in college football. So it was fun to see all the pomp and circumstance surrounding it. It was fantastic. Second question. Uh, John Wilner, who writes for the Mercury News, uh, he implied that USC season is basically over due to the fact that they have nothing left to play for, or can they still accomplish some goals? USC actually still has a lot to play for. I know it may not be the college football playoff or anything, and it's less about this season and more about the fact that they're actually building something. And if they quit and mail this season in, then the season is absolutely lost. It takes 21 days to build a habit, and that means it takes 21 games to build the physicality that you need, the type of defense that you need, the mentality that you need, and they're moving in the right direction. Now, moving in the right direction does not always guarantee that that the wins and losses are going to show up the way you want it to, but this is a team that is headed in the right direction despite what the record says because they would have gotten blown out in a bunch of these games this year instead of having close losses. Number three, Mac Brown at UNC, Sonny Dykes at TCU, Hugh Freeze at Auburn, Lance Leipold at Kansas, Billy Napier at Florida, Lincoln Riley at USC, Deion Sanders at Colorado, Scott Satterfield at Cincinnati, and Mark Stoops are all five and eight in their last 13 games. In your eyes, George, are there any of these coaches that are trending up or are they all in danger of riding the coaching carousel and getting in it after this season? So first thing up, let's discuss Scott Satterfield over at Cincinnati because he actually has a huge game this weekend to potentially move to five and two on the season as they play ASU. And if they beat five and one ASU, that is going to be a significant win for them. And it is going to do some major encouragement surrounding that Cincinnati program, which was in a different state three years ago at three years ago or so when they were in the college football playoff to now it looks like they're floundering a little bit and they're going to have to make some big time wins for him and his job to be safe. Uh, You got Mark Stoops. He just got $8.6 million a year through 2031. Do you think that Kentucky fans are looking for a rebuild? that they're going to be sitting there talking about, oh, some NIL money and all of it. No, they're like, find a way to win, homie. And that's why he should have been aggressive against Georgia instead of playing not to lose. Now, granted, Kentucky's probably not going to fire him, but they are going to be under major pressure next year to have a winning season and not just have these one-off games where where you win one and then you get blew out by South Carolina. That ain't going to cut it. Then you got Lincoln Riley over at USC. His buyout is estimated to be about $88 million, and USC is still having success recruiting. Right now on 247, 
they are inside of the top 10 in recruiting right now. So as if you can have hope, hope is always going to be the thing that, that, that drives, you know, whether coaches stay or leave. Cause that's one of my two criteria about whether to fire a coach or keep a coach. And then you got Deion Sanders. <laughs> what, what, what are you going to do there? The dude is absolutely paying for himself. And then some at Colorado branding awareness, enrollments up, uh, the, the the football team is getting additional money and opportunity. So, yeah, ain't Deion Sanders ain't going nowhere no time soon. And then you got Lance Leipold over at Kansas. Yes, there are going to be a bunch of people who are calling for his job after this year, but absolutely not. Last year was a gem of a season with his quarterback hurt and shuffling guys and everything else and a rough season this year. No, he's going to have the ability to fire coordinators and then have a fresh start for next year. And then that's when some pressure will be on, but I still don't put him at the hot seat quite yet. Uh, Billy Napier, he's got to win big, big games, man. He should have went for two against Tennessee this last week because that could have put a win in his back pocket and probably made him safe after this season. Uh, Hugh Freeze at Auburn. Lord have mercy. I, I, Auburn is not performing anywhere to the level that, that they would have hoped. And truthfully, his record is worse than his predecessors that they fired. So, yes, Hugh Freeze on the hot seat at this point in time. Number four is Arizona State running back Cam Scadaboo actually this good, or is this the great white hype situation? Listen, I have been completely wrong in not putting Cam Scadaboo in my Heisman conversation. Arizona State is inexplicably five and one right now and then let's get into the stats he has forced 49 missed tackles this season which is actually uh one above Aston Ginty who is who is absolutely dominating the Heisman conversation he is first in the FBS in first down runs third in all-purpose uh yards fifth in rushing yards and 12th in touchdowns and that ain't a guy that we should be talking about in the Heisman Trophy conversation come on now the dude played quarterback last year, high-end pass blocker, and he's playing 15 to 20 pounds lighter than he did last year. Are you kidding me? Listen, he got to be in the conversation. Number five, and you guys make sure that you guys like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show, get notifications. I'm going to give you a second. Go down there. Click the buttons, people. Number five, Brent Venables over at Oklahoma. He says he's against mid-season staff changes, but he wasn't against a mid-season quarterback change, even though it's running game is actually the thing that's broken. Make it make sense. Well, here is Brent Venable's quote. He said, you go back and look at where I've been. I've not been a part of any staff changes in the middle of the season. Bill Snyder, Bob Stoops, at, and at Clemson with Dabo Sweeney. There's always problems. Some people know about, some people don't. Sometimes you don't have success and people point to one guy. And most of the time, it's a combination of a lot of things of why you're struggling. So again, you try and put out all the things together on why you're struggling. All right. So first thing is their offensive coordinator, Seth Luttrell, he needs to get this running game right because Oklahoma is doing nothing on the ground right now. Because through six games, the Sooners only have five rushes of more than 20 yards. And the two longest are by quarterbacks. Taylor Tatum is the only one of the Sooners regular running backs with a run longer than 17 yards. And overall, they're averaging 3.4 yards per carry. And you cannot do that and win in the SEC, Big 12 or anybody for that matter of fact. Number six, could we see a service academy in the college football playoff? How about no? <laughs> Army and Navy, yes, they're both ranked for the first time since 1960. Army is 6-0. And they still have Notre Dame on the schedule. Navy is 5-0, and and they have Notre Dame after this weekend. So, of course, technically, there is a chance. But here's the thing. They're both ranked behind Boise State right now. And they'll need help from everybody from Boise State. The only people that they can't get help from really is UNLV. And they can potentially get caught from behind by Washington State if Texas Tech continues to win because Washington State will get the credit for being beating Texas Tech 
and being their only loss. But once you're in the top 25, it's hard to fall out without losing. But it'll be interesting to see how the committee views their schedules because their schedules have not been top tier, not even a little bit. And these are two teams that actually play the weekend after the conference championship games get settled. So it's going to be very, very clear what's going to happen. And if Boise State ends up running through the Mountain West, this won't even be a question. Because can you imagine if we have a situation where we have two undefeated service academies that are playing each other on December 14th for the right to play a team like Georgia? What? That would be absolutely insane. I would love it, but it's very unlikely. Number seven, Arizona fans are talking about wanting to fire Brent Brennan after six games. Do you think that they're crazy or has this offense underperformed enough to possibly hit the reset button after one year? Okay, so let's get to the bottom of this. Arizona, their head coach was Jeff Fish last year. He's now at Washington. He took a bunch of players in the transfer portal, including their best running back, and this team has not performed well. This defense has been horrendous at times. And most concerning is that the offense with Noah Fafita and Tedaroa McMillan has not performed up to expectations because Arizona had huge expectations coming into 2024. But why, I mean, for really being honest, it was more a residual of last year because Jeff Fish took the whole staff handful of the best players and half the 2024 recruiting class with him to Washington. Plus Arizona's best lineman was ruled out for the year before the year even started. And yes, Arizona finished last year ranked 11th, but that's the only the third time in the last 30 years that they've even finished the season ranked. Like you got to trust the process at this point in time because Brent Brennan and his entire staff are California recruiters. Name another team in the big 12 with access to California not Colorado, they aren't even interested in recruiting high schoolers that much. How about Utah? No, Utah is about to bounce, and Arizona State is focused on Texas. So people, give Brent Brennan time. He might actually turn it around this year because last year San Jose State, where he was, started one and five before they rattled off six in a row to finish the season. Number eight, Shiloh Sanders got called out by his daddy after pretty much losing Colorado the game with his poor play against Kansas State. What are your feelings on that? I love the fact that uh, his dad, Deion Sanders, called him out because he's been accused of playing daddy ball so many times. So if he was daddy balling it, would he not call his own son out? Well, he did it. And Shiloh Sanders on Tuesday's press conference, and you got to remember he had been out with a broken arm, so he was a little bit rusty. He said, quote, you work to get back, and then you get back, and you have the worst game of your life. Man, it's really disappointing for me, especially for the fans. So I've been seeing everybody turn on me and stuff like that. I'm not worried about none of that, because as soon as you do good, they're going to be right back on your side, just how they was when we won the UCF game out there in Florida. So I'm not really worried about none of that. I love it. He's exactly right. You can't go on the whims of fans. Oh, they're mad at me. I'm upset. No, man. Stay the course. Uh, number nine, should Utah quarterback Cam Rising seek an eighth year? If he does, should it be Utah? This is a complicated question because if you go back to what Cam Rising told Brett McMurphy, he's before the season, he was like, listen, I've already had enough. I am done with college football. But I don't think that Cam Rising anticipated that he'd be hurt on the first series versus ASU and gutting out a season-ending leg injury that shows he really wanted to be on the football field after missing all of 2023. This is hard, man, because on one hand, could he get some NIL money from going to another university? Yes. Should it be Utah? Absolutely not. That's run its course. This is Isaac Wilson's team right now. He's played pretty good, but honestly... Is he going to go to the NFL? Probably not. If so, it'll be a late round draft pick. So he's got to wait a little bit of NIL money somewhere or go to the NFL and give it a shot, potentially be a backup quarterback somewhere. Listen, this is going to be his call. Mine would probably be to the, go to the league and start my life because uh, I don't want to be Van Wilder. Number 10, George, which undefeated teams are in the most danger this week eight in college football? Ooh. 
My Oregon Ducks are in the biggest danger this week against Purdue on a short week on Friday night. Dude, they're going to be on the high, the emotional high of beating Ohio State, and they are in for a potential letdown because Purdue, who had been struggling on offense, switched their quarterback from Hudson Card, and now they threw for over 300 yards last week. So Oregon doesn't even have a lot of tape on this kid, and Purdue is excited. So, yes, they are in the most danger, but obviously – Texas hosting Georgia. That's a big opportunity. Miami visiting Louisville. Uh, Indiana hosting 5-1 and one Nebraska. Iowa State playing UCF. BYU at home versus UCF. BYU versus Oklahoma State. Army and East Carolina. And Navy playing Charlotte. Yes, there are a lot of teams that are in danger. And Texas is probably the next up. But it's situational. And that's why I say the Ducks. And you guys, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show, get notifications, and most importantly, share, baby.